Son, get off of that game already. It's been eight hours. Go screw yourself, Dad. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Tyler, this is unacceptable behavior. Get off the game. Go die, Dad. Just go die. You're crossing the line here, Tyler. Dinner is ready in five minutes. Hey guys, I'm Natalie here, and here's the story on how my brother ended up getting disowned by my family and hated by my neighborhood. The last straw involves me in a big part of it, and although it was a painful story, I'm glad I don't have to deal with Tyler anymore. So Tyler was younger than me by three years, and he had always been such a piece of work. I wasn't ever too close to him even as we lived under our parents' roof until we were adults. All throughout our childhood, Tyler was constantly getting himself into so much trouble. I could still recall a few instances of his insanity, such as when he keyed an old woman's car and when he got suspended for smashing a toilet bowl at school. I think the signs of how he was going to turn out were pretty obvious from the start, but my parents just didn't notice or ignored it. Son, get off of that game already. It's been eight hours. Go screw yourself, Dad. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Tyler, this is unacceptable behavior. Get off the game. Go die, Dad. Just go die. You're crossing the line here, Tyler. Dinner is ready in five minutes. Did you just see what happened? That was Tyler when he was only five years old, which is pretty insane to me. But instead of trying to discipline him, my parents let him go about his ways of just playing video games all day and eating unhealthy foods as well. And while my little brother was in elementary school, he would get into close trouble constantly. He did various things like making fun of the girls in his class, throwing tantrums at the adults who worked at the school, and even trying to feed his friends glue and art beads from the art room. When Tyler was in fourth grade, he was suspended for the first time for stealing a teacher's headache pills and giving them out to other students. Another teacher had obviously caught this happening and he was sent to the office and given a three-day suspension. Tyler came home that day, awfully suspicious. He seemed a little bit happy, but when our mom noticed him, he forced a sad face. Hi, mom. Hi, sweetie. How was school? Fine. Um, I'm not going to school tomorrow. Why is that? I got suspended. What? Why? I don't know. They just told me I can't go to school for the next three days. That's outrageous. I'm sure you did the right thing, Tyler. I'm going to call up the school and demand for answers. Well, my mom Liliana did call the school. The school then proceeded to explain what had happened, unlike Tyler. Even then, our parents started defending my insane thief of a brother and saying that he had no idea that the pills were drugs and that they could have totally been candy. Obviously, the school had not believed my parents, but they shortened his sentence to just one day because our parents did end up threatening to sue. This just went on and on for years, with Tyler's crimes getting more heinous as he got older. His language was also quite gross. He would say all different types of racial slurs whenever he got the chance, and always had something rude to say about women. And this wasn't something on the mild side, Tyler has said some of the most out-of-pocket things about women that I haven't forgotten to this day. Nat, what do you think about my girlfriend? She's a sweet girl, why? She just dresses like a slut, and I hate it. Her body is only for me to touch, and she has her stuff on full display for other guys. But weren't you shaming the unpopular girls for wearing too much coverage? Also, you told me the only reason you're dating her is because she was hot. Shut up. I knew it was a wrong idea, asking another girl for relationship advice. Do you see how stupid Tyler sounds? I still remember the year that my brother was arrested for a day for smashing in a teacher's car windows because she told him that he needed to get his act together for school. My parents were hysterical about this and were totally convinced that he'd done nothing wrong. I was pissed about this. This was just so typical of them. Liliana and Lance showed up to the police station with mom wailing and dad looking stern. I decided to tag along just to see what would happen, although I kind of already knew what would be happening. Oh boy. My son, he's only a child, he doesn't deserve this. Our son is a good boy. Tyler would never do anything to get put behind bars. Sir and ma'am, we have video evidence of Tyler committing vandalism on his teacher's car. It's pretty clear that it was him who did it. He didn't say anything, did he? I'm calling my lawyer right now. I was honestly beyond pissed. Now how could my mom and dad be so defensive and in denial of what my crazy brother was doing? I wanted to start yelling at them, but knowing that they would never defend me like they do for my brother, I kept my mouth shut. After all, this was my brother's life and not mine. I'd rather just live in peace with a demon that was going through puberty and getting worse in terms of his behavior. Liliana and Lance borrowed an insane amount of money for a lawyer, 
to protect what was their precious son. Natalie, give me 20 bucks. Um, why? Shut up and give it to me, woman. I need it, because I'm going out to the movies with my boys tonight. What the hell? Don't talk to me like that. Natalie, honey, give your brother the money. You're older than him, and I'm sure you'll easily find a way to earn back the money. Mom, that's not fair. Do as I say, or I'm going to take $40 and give it to your brother. The final straw came through soon enough when Tyler was maybe 17 or 18. This is really scary to talk about, but I know that I need to. One day, Tyler came home with a few of his buddies. These friends were a bit older than Tyler and all of them had obviously been drinking due to their behavior and slurred speech. I was annoyed that Tyler would decide to bring these people to our home. These grown adults who smoked, drank, and were usually just people most would see as bad influences. Mom and Dad were out, and I knew that there was no way they would believe what I told them about Tyler, even with video evidence. So I decided to just stay in my room until those drunks decide to leave the house. But they did the complete opposite. About an hour had passed, and I heard several footsteps coming down the hallway. I stayed silent with my schoolwork, a bit curious about what was happening. My heart sank when I heard this conversation. Wait, are you sure your sister is hot? Of course, she'd totally be on one of those dirty sites if she didn't have such high morals. I'm taking your word on this. I call first dibs. You said she's never been with a guy before, right? Nope. That's why I'm charging so much for her. Unlike my whore of a girlfriend, Nat is worth the 250 bucks. I'm so impatient. Is she asleep yet? I can't even begin to explain how fast my heart was beating at this point. I didn't want to believe the conversation that was happening was true, but of course it was. I jump out of my seat and dash into the closet upon hearing the doorknob turn. I sat there, quaking in fear. I saw two of Tyler's alcoholic friends tiptoeing in. They looked confused and angry that I wasn't asleep in my bed. One of his friends started yelling at him angrily. While Tyler insisted that I was probably just hiding in the room, I wanted to scream. What the hell was my brother even doing? Before I had time to collect my thoughts, the closet door opened with a heavy force, and I got dragged into the room by this crazy trio. I'm not going to share the exact details of what happened since it's so painful, so I will just summarize everything briefly. Tyler's friends had gotten my clothes off and were about to go for it, but they were so intoxicated that they hadn't heard the front door opening with the return of my parents. Liliana suddenly walks into my room to accuse me of letting drunk teenagers into the house. And although I'm a little upset that she would think I'd do such a thing, I'm obviously thankful. If she hadn't come in, who knows what could have happened to me. Liliana screams out in absolute horror and she tears the two friends off of me. I was crying and trying to cover myself when my parents discovered the sinful activities that were about to happen, but a little glad that they weren't able to actually do it. My parents, for the first time, saw Tyler in a new light. They called the police and they arrested Tyler and his friends for underage drinking, assault, and attempted rape. After that, there was an entire process which I'm not able to explain, but he was jailed for a couple of years. But my mom did tell me that Tyler wasn't going to be allowed near me for a long time. I'm so sorry, Nat. I never knew that Tyler was going to become this horrible kind of human being. Yes, sweetheart. We should have seen it coming. I didn't feel like calling them out on their BS, so I just ignored their plain excuses. After this incident, I never saw my brother again. I went on to go to therapy and it helped me get through the rest of my college years. I got a stable job as well and found a boyfriend that treated me amazingly. He even helped me get through my trauma. I knew that even though my parents disliked Tyler for what he did to me, they still favored him a lot. They sent him money often since he was a high school dropout and still continued on as if their son wasn't charged with multiple crimes. I could care less at this point, since I wasn't even living with my family anymore. But one day, mom called me while crying hysterically. She told me that my brother had passed away from a drug overdose and that he had so much to live for. That was almost comedic. I pretended to console her but never showed up to the funeral. He didn't deserve it. What do you think of my story? Thanks for listening.